Welcome back everyone, Ningpu here, and today I wanted to let you know how Liquid Metal performs on the 2020 Acer Nitro 5. I looked at a few brands and settled on the Thermalrite Silver King. Before I get started, you should understand that this can destroy your machine if it drips on a component. So you have to be very careful. It is very conductive, and according to the site, it is 100% liquid metal alloy. Adding the liquid metal to your machine will definitely void your warranty, so know this before and if you try. The kit came with a one ounce tube of liquid metal, two swabs, one brush, one applicator tip, and one wipe. The tape I will be using is Scotch Super 33 Plus. It has a temperature tolerance of 105 C. I've already dismantled the machine and if you would like to know how, I have plenty of videos showing you the procedure. Here's a shot of the thermal paste after the heat sink is removed. I cut out a template so I can mark the spot on the heat sink to apply the liquid metal. This is not a necessary step, but I just want to make sure that both sides will have contact with liquid metal. Next I tape off the area on the CPU, GPU and heat sink. I was very careful not to overlap the tape to avoid any raised areas. Applying this was very easy, just a soft push on the plunger and out it came. A little much, but you know, we can work with this. After I finish the GPU, I'll start on the CPU by using some of the excess liquid metal. Now I'm going to apply it to the heatsink. It doesn't matter if it gets on the tape as we're going to pull it off anyway. As I put this on, I'm making sure that there are no pools of liquid metal and that the layers are thin. Now I'm going to put the heatsink back on. After running a few stress tests, I felt something was just off. I removed the cover and found that some of the thermal pads were hard and brittle. I replaced all of them with the K5 Pro that I purchased last year. I also cut some of the excess tape off that was around the CPU and GPU so that it fits inside the recess of the metal plate. This is the stress test in CPU-Z. Stock has the core package at 92C, max temp is 93C, and is throttling. Using Cryonaut, the core package is 77C, max temp is 80C, and there's no throttle present. Using the Silver King liquid metal, CPU package is 75C, max temp is 76C, and there's no throttling. This is ADA64. The CPU by itself reached 76C. The GPU by itself reached 61C. When both the GPU and CPU were stressed, the CPU temp increased to 80C, while the GPU increased to 64. And again, no throttling was noticed while any of the tests were going on. This is the Valley benchmark using the Extreme preset. Both the CPU and GPU are pretty cool and no throttling.
Here is the Far Cry 5 in-game benchmark with stock, cryonaut, and silver king liquid metal. The temps of course get lower from each of the different applications. There is throttling with the stock thermal grease but none with the others. The average FPS are the same for all three. While playing Borderlands 3, the CPU replaced it with Cryonaut seems cooler. The FPS for both were close and fluctuating, and there was no throttling detected. This is the game Insurgency Sandstorm, and this is another game that, depending on where you are, the FPS will increase or decrease greatly. Temperatures decrease as you move to the liquid from stock, and there is throttling only on the stock thermal grease. Last we have Titanfall 2. FPS and temps are very close with the knot going to the liquid. This is another game to where FPS differs depending on what level you are on. The temps are within 1 to 2 degrees of each other which is pretty good for the cryonaut. Here is the idle temps after a bunch of tests. When it's all said and done, it's up to you to decide whether the liquid metal is for you. It can be dangerous if applied the wrong way or may not work correctly. I disassembled this machine over seven times making sure that everything was correct by changing thermal pads, pressing down on the heatsink, tightening screws, just to make sure that there was contact. I've seen many videos with better results on different machines and maybe I could have gotten a bad batch. Regardless, there are temp decreases, but for my situation, it's probably better that I stick to Cryonaut as the temps are pretty close, much safer, and less mess. It's also easier for beginners to use as they may not have the confidence to try early on. And with that said, if you found this video helpful, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Mean Poo, out.